Hi, this is Mark from Tripsolo. Today I have two small games for you. One is called Orchard, the second one is called Grove. They are released by Sideroom Games and thanks Sideroom Games for sending them for review. I will talk about both of them in one video because they are quite similar. And they are part of, you can say, a series of games. Orchard was the first one, then there is Grove. Uh, they are made by Mark Tuck. Uh, the third game from the series will be released or crowdfunded uh, this year, probably, from what I know. And in these games, you will uh, create your um, orchard or grove and you will try to harvest as many fruits as you can. They are kind of puzzle games. Uh, you will just use nine cards in each game, in both of these games. Uh, orchard was released uh, first as a print and play game, from what I know. It was even awarded uh, with a Golden Geek Award for best print and play game in uh, 2018. And Sideroom Games took this game and created a nice box edition, then uh, Grove was released. So now let me show you how to play these games and then I will tell you what I think uh, about them. This is Orchard, uh, all the components. Uh, the game comes in this small, cool, uh, compact box. Everything fits inside. You have 18 cards, you have the rulebook, you have 15 dice. Uh, this dice, uh, they re represent different fruits. You have apples, you have plums and you have uh, pears. And there are two uh, rotten fruit uh, tokens with this uh, cool worms. Uh, the rule book is uh, not long. It explains everything on just a few pages. So to play the game, you need to shuffle all your cards, of course. Then you have to take nine cards. Seven, eight, nine. So we have nine cards. And these are the cards that you will play the game with. Uh, to start playing, you take the top card from this deck, uh, you place it on the table, and this will be the beginning, uh, the starting card of your ore chart. Then from the remaining cards, you have to take two. And these are the cards that uh, are in your hand that you will use to build the ore chart and to harvest different fruits. As you can see, you have on each card you have uh, trees in different color. As I said, they represent different fruits, like apples, yellow are uh, pears, and purple are plums. And you have to take, in your turn, you have to take one card and put it somewhere on the cards. Now, right now it's one card, but on the card or cards that are already on the table. And the rules of placement are that this new card has to overlap the remaining cards on the table with at least one tree. So we cannot put the new card like this, or you cannot put it like here. The cards need to overlap and you have to match trees. So like here we have apple and we have uh, pears, and here we have apples and we have pears. So we can put this card like this to cover the fruits. And if you put a tree uh, on other tree already on the table, you take a die and put it on this tree. So if there was no die here, you take die with value one and you put it uh, here. And now you have one card in your hand, you take second card and this game continues like this. Now you have to place another uh, card. I can place this card, for example, like this. I will put plum with value one and plum with value one. So I have already four points. It's not a lot. <laughs> I take another card and the game continues like this. If at some point you will be able to uh, overlap a tree that already has a die on it, like for example, here we have uh, plum, uh, pure and apple, we can put it here. So if you put it like this, you will put a uh, die with value one on the pure tree, but because we had already die with value to one, you will increase it to three and put here. So this is the way to increase values of your uh, dice. They go from one to three. Then if you manage to overlap a tree with this value, it goes to six. And if you manage to overlap a tree with die value six, it goes up to 10 and this is maximum value of a tree in your orchard. So you have to try to 
get as many tens as you can because at the end of the game uh, at the end of the rulebook there is this uh, section that tells you how you how it went how fruitful was your harvest so depending of your score you are poultry forgettable satisfactory <laughs> or uh, a lot of uh, funny uh, names there are also these two uh, rotten fruit tokens if at any point of this game you will not you will not be able to match a, a tree uh, with the new card on the already that is on the orchard like for example if you want to put this card here you can see that the uh, pear tree is okay so we put one but here we have plums and here we have pears you can do it twice per game but then you will have to put rotten fruit token on this tree because it doesn't match the tree below and at the end of the game you will get minus three point for each uh, worm and the uh, a tree with a worm on it cannot be overlapped in future turns so this is a way to sometimes you want to put a, a card in a specific spot and one spot doesn't match but you have to remember that you will lose three points at the end of the game and the game continues until all the cards are gone and placed on the table and then you just count your score uh, the numbers on your dice minus the uh, rotten uh, tree uh, tokens and this is basically how you play orchard you can play this game uh, also you can play with more people but each person will need uh, a separate copy of orchard and basically all the players play their own game they just use the same cards because uh, as you can see the cards are numbered like 3 16 etc so players will use exactly the same cards in the game and then they will compare uh, the score now i would like to show you how to play uh, growth the second game from this uh, series as you can see the components for growth are quite similar you have uh, almost exactly uh, uh, the same box, the same size. Again, we have uh, 16 cards with different uh, trees. Here you have uh, limes, you have lemons and you have oranges. But here the cards are double-sided because you have different recipes on the back. I will talk about the recipes later. Again, you have this small uh, rule book that explains how to play the game. You have uh, 15 dice. And you don't have the rotten fruit tokens, but you have a squirrel and you have a wheelbarrow. So, how to play uh, Grove? Again, you have to take uh, nine cards. You have to shuffle them, of course. Six, seven, eight, nine. You will take nine cards. You will take one card. It will be the start of your uh, Grove. And then you take two cards from the uh, deck and you will have to place them on the table. The rules are very similar uh, You have to place cards here. So they will overlap the cards that are already on the table The trees need to match But the main difference is that the trees have different number of fruits like here the lime tree has two fruits and the um, Lemon tree has got one fruit if you look at the cards from orchard the number of fruits didn't matter because when you put one tree on the other tree, you just increase the dice to one, from one to three, from three to six, and then to 10. Here, if you overlap a tree, for example, we can do something like, I don't know, let me think, or oh, for example, something like this. Here in this game, uh, you will have to count the number of fruits. We have one and one lime, so we will put two. But we have two lemons and one lemon, so we will uh, set it to uh, three. So the number of fruits uh, matter in this uh, game. And the game continues like this. Like now I have, uh, I don't know, I can do something like this. I will put four here. I take another card. The other difference apart, apart from the fruit numbers is uh, are the empty spaces. They are called glades and you can um, put a glade on a, uh, on a card to cover a tree that is below it like i could put put it here so i will have two uh, lemons 
and I can uh, use this uh, glade to cover this orange tree. It doesn't give you any negative score. If, for example, I would have a die uh, with value 2 here and I cover the tree with a glade, I will put this uh, die on a glade. And at the end of the game, uh, if there are any uh, dice on glades, they will not uh, count to your number of points because the, these are the fruits that are uh, that fell on the ground and are lost. But if you manage to cover a glade with a matching tree, you will move the die here. So the glades are another way to you know build your growth here. Mm. You don't have any rotten fruit tokens. You have this square and once per game, not twice, because in Orchard you had two tokens with the worm. Here you have one squirrel. And once per game, if the tree doesn't match, you can put a squirrel here. And it gives you negative points as well, but in a different way, because a squirrel will give you minus one point for the squirrel and minus one point for each die that is uh, adjacent to the squirrel. So it can give you minus one point, but also minus four if you have four dice uh, around the, this animal. <laughs> and you also have a wheelbarrow. A wheelbarrow uh, is, um, has value 15, because if at any point you manage to uh, have uh, 10 on your die and you will be able to increase this tree even further, once per game you can replace this uh, die with uh, wheelbarrow, it will be uh, it, it has value 15 at the end of the game. And the game continues like this, at the end of the game of course you have to compare your score with the results in the rulebook. But uh, and the, I think the main difference in this game in growth uh, compared to Orchard are all these recipes that are printed on the back of the cards. Because if you, if you want, it's not uh, obligatory, you can, after you know shuffling the cards, you can randomly take two cards with different recipes and they give you different scoring conditions. And for example, Lime Cordial, all five Lime Dice are in play. If, they, if all five Lime Dice are in play, you will get an additional five points. Or at least one glade is surrounded by four adjacent uh, dice. Bonus four points. Uh, if you manage to, you know, fulfill these uh, recipes, they will give you additional points. But in order to win the game, you have to score at least the number of points that are that the sum of the numbers on these two recipe cards. So here we have 30 and 26. You will have to score 56 or more in order to win the game if you use these two recipes. They all have different uh, values. Some give you no require more points, some less. But this is a really fun way to play the game because uh, it gives you win lose condition. You don't you not only have to build your growth and score points, but you have to get more points than the sum of the two cards that you have chosen for your game. And you have uh, 16 different recipes, so it's a really really cool uh, idea. So this is how you play growth. Let's go to summary. As you have seen in, in the previous part of the video, they are uh, very charming, small, easy to learn games. Uh, the gameplay takes uh, the boxes uh, 10 minutes, I think maximum 10 minutes, because in each game, as you have seen, you will just use nine cards. Of course, you have to think how to play these cards, but this game are really easy to, to learn. You have two cards in your hand and you have to add one of these cards to the table uh, to cover the, the, the trees that are al already on the table to create more uh, fruits. Very easy to learn. Um, and they feel very similar. Uh, Orchard was the first game in the series and you can feel it because it's a little simpler than uh, Grof. Um, the main differences are that in Grof you have uh, glades, so some areas on the cards have no trees. So you can cover, uh, you can use glades to cover any tree, or you can cover uh, a glade with any tree of any color. Um, and also in growth, you have to count the number of uh, fruits on each tree, because in orchard, when you covered uh, one tree with another tree of the same color, you just uh, use dice 
to track it. Uh, first you place the die with value 1, then you change 1 to 3, 3 to 6, 6 to 10, and that's it. In, in growth you have to count the number of fruits, so if you cover a tree with two fruits, with another tree with one fruit, then you will have, uh, you will put a die um, with three on, on it. Uh, the main difference is also that in growth you have these uh, recipes, and this is a really cool idea because uh, on, on the back of uh, all the cards you have some recipes printed and in, in each game if you want you can use two recipes each of them has got a number in the left top corner and if you count, uh, if you add these numbers uh, this is the score you have to achieve in a game each recipe will give you some additional points uh, for making uh, specific things during the game but you also have to score a specific number of, co of uh, points to win the game otherwise you will lose but even though they are similar they play a little differently because in Orchard you have no glades you have to be more careful how you place the die uh, you have two rotten fruit uh, tokens with the small worms so twice during the game you can uh, place a tree over a tree and the trees don't have too much you will score negative points but you can do it twice in uh, growth you only have one uh, squirrel token that you can use to do it so only once per game you can uh, put one tree on the other on other tree and they don't have too much but on the other hand you have the wheelbarrow in growth that uh, can give you 15 points so there are some differences uh, if you would like to choose only one i would say uh, get uh, growth because it's more advanced it, adds, it has more variety mostly thanks to the recipes that you know give you some additional bonuses but you have to um, score a specific number of points but if you like this type of games you can have both of them because they've played differently uh, you have different cards with different layout of the trees so it's really cool and they are really well made uh, this is another thing i want to mention uh, this is a small box uh, the box is really sturdy and all the cards are uh, pvc cards and this is really cool because they these are like plastic cards you can play these games anywhere, you can shuffle it, you don't have to use sleeves, you can play it uh, in, you know, in the sand, you can play it in a swimming pool, everywhere. So it's perfect for a you know, portable game, uh, games like this, because you don't have to worry, uh, you can play them on a you know, coffee table somewhere, in a you know, restaurant, on, on, in a coffee shop, anywhere. It's really, really cool, you have nice dice, they have uh, custom you know, sites with uh, trees, uh, with uh, fruits and everything. So these games are really well produced. They are portable and I had a lot of fun playing them. They, uh, they are very addictive because, you know, one game takes like uh, five, 10 minutes and you have 18 cards and you use only nine cards uh, in one game. So you can shuffle the deck. You will take nine cards. You will play the game and you can take the remaining nine cards and play it again. So it's really addictive. Very simple, a perfect game if you, you know, have a coffee break somewhere and you want to play something for 5-10 minutes. It's really, really nice. I can't wait for the third game in the series. Uh, I don't remember the name right now, but I'm really curious what new, you know, mechanics the third uh, game will introduce. So thank you for watching the video. Click the like button if you like the video. Subscribe to my channel. Visit me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I will leave links in the description. I also will leave links to Side Room Games website where you can get these games. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.